Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and today I'm going to do the first of three videos about hand quilting. In the first video, I'm going to show you all the basic tools and supplies that you need, and I'm going to show you how to do the basic hand quilting stitch. In the second video, I'm going to show you some tips for doing more intricate quilting without marking on your quilt first. And in the third video, I'm going to show you something called big stitch quilting, which is quilting using embroidery thread and bigger stitches. First, let's talk a little bit about some of the tools that you need. For the way that I quilt, I use a hoop or, or a frame. Some people quilt without it, but the method that I'm going to show you uses a frame. So this one is just like a giant embroidery hoop, really inexpensive and easy to find. The only drawback to it is that it's round. And a lot of times your quilts have, usually your quilt will have square blocks. So sometimes it's handier to have a frame like this that's a square frame. This is called a Q-snap frame. And it's a little bit harder to find. So I've, I've got a link in the blog post that goes with this that shows you where you can buy it. But this is a, inside the quilt is a plexiglass frame or a, a PVC frame. And then these uh, things just snap on and off and really hold the quilt very tightly and nice. But I'm going to show you the rest of what you need for this. So for this today, we're going to use just a regular embroidery hoop style frame. One difference, you'll notice that this is not drum tight. If you were doing embroidery, you would want this to be really, really tight in here. Basically as tight as you can make it without distorting the fabric. But for quilting, you want a little bit of give. So I'll show you. You'll see why when we start to do the actual stitch. Some of the other materials that you're going to need are thread. You don't want to use regular sewing thread for this. You want to use quilting thread, and it's also easy to find. If you're in one of the big box fabric stores like Hancock or Joann's, you're going to be able to find Coates & Clark hand quilting thread. And if you're in an independent quilt shop, they're likely to have some other really nice brands. This is Guterman, and you want to look for one that says quilting on it. The nice thing about quilting thread is that it's heavier than regular thread. It's also stiffer and the ends don't fray at all. And since you're going to be threading this through a really, really tiny needle, it's really nice. This is actually super easy to thread even though the needle is really small. So let's talk needles. Quilting needles are called betweens and this is the pack that I sell in my shop. This is a range of five sizes of needles, sizes five to ten. And on needles, the higher the number, the smaller the size. So in this pack, the fives are the big needles here in the middle, and the tens are the really tiny needles on the end. And here is the one that I use. This is, I'm pretty sure, is a size nine, so it's the second smallest needle in that pack. You can see that it's a very short, sharp needle. It's also very strong. You can still bend them, but it's harder to do it. And it has a very, very tiny eye, if you can see that. And that's one of the reasons that uh, the quilting thread is so nice. It's really easy to thread through that tiny eye. The last thing that you're going to need is a thimble. And a lot of people really don't like to sew with a thimble, but for quilting, for hand quilting, you really, really need it. I like these silicone thimbles. It's got a rubber, soft, um, the body of the thimble is pretty soft, which is, makes it much more comfortable. But the end of the thimble is metal, which gives you enough strength to push on it on your needle and it also has these little dimples in the end which gives the the needle it gives it a place to grab that needle so this is the thimble that i use and I've, i'll have a link in the blog post on um you, so you can get them in my shop but you can find them lots of different places i you can also use an all metal thimble i used that for years but i t it tended to get really uncomfortable where it would dig on the back of my finger here what you can't use is an all silicone thimble. I've seen those in the shops and the, the eye of the needle will poke right through the top of the thimble without this metal end on it. So don't try and do an all silicone thimble. It won't work for this particular method. So here's how we do it. I've got my needle threaded and I've got a tiny little knot tied in the end. I've got another video that shows how to tie that knot. I'm gonna show you how to bury that knot and then how to do the stitch. So I've got here, I've got three layers of fabric, just like if it was a regular quilt. You've got your top layer, your batting, and your backing, and I've pin basted those layers together. If this was a regular quilt, um, you would start in the middle of the quilt with your quilting and then work your way out to the edges of the quilt. So we're going to get this going here. Um, 
I usually actually sit with this in my lap, so this might be a little tricky to show, but let's see what we can do. You're gonna start by running your needle between the layers, so it's not coming out on the back. Run it between the layers and come up wherever you wanna start. Pull it through until that knot just rests at the edge of the fabric, and then if you give it a little tug, it'll go right through and bury itself in the batting. So now that, that knot is hidden. And we're going to start the stitch. So you go whatever your stitch length is, however long you want your stitches to be. The hand underneath the, um, underneath the frame here is just a sensor. I'm not doing anything with it except feeling for when that needle pokes through. And as soon as that needle pokes through, I balance I'm, I'm balancing the end. You can see how it's grabbing the, end, the eye of the needle on that thimble. And I'm going to, you know, I fooled around with it too much. Put it in there, balance it there. I've still got my finger underneath there where it's just poking through. And I'm going to angle this back. And I'm pushing down. See why we have the slightly loose fabric? I'm pushing down with this leading thumb and pushing until that needle just pokes through. And then you go straight up, so it's going straight down to the back fabric. And again, as soon as it pokes, as I can feel it poke through with the bottom hand, I change direction and go back. And I've got my thumb in front of it, kind of folding that fabric down in front of the needle. As soon as it comes through, I do the same thing, go straight down. As Soon as I feel it poke through on the back, I change direction again and go through. Push it through as far as you can, just with the end of the thimble, and then you grab it, and pull it through. So you do several stitches at one go. Here it is, I'm gonna do another run, loading up another batch of stitches on the needle from a different angle, so you might be able to see it a little bit differently. So I poke it in a stitch length ahead. As soon as I can feel it from the bottom, I shift and work push it through. As soon as it pokes out, I poke down. As soon as I feel it on the bottom, I poke up again. I'm just going to do a couple that time and pull it through. Now I want to talk a little bit about perfection here. You can see that my stitches are not perfectly all the same size and they are not as small as a quilting expert says they need to be. I can't even remember what the ideal number of stitches per inch is, but I actually like my stitches to be a tiny bit bigger here. The other problem with my stitches, if we can zoom out for a second, if you look at them from the back, you can see that my stitches on the back are significantly smaller than my stitches on the front. Ideally, if you're showing your quilts in a quilt show, Judges are going to look at things like this. They want to make sure that your stitches on the back are the same length as the ones on the front and that the length of the stitch is exactly the same length as the space between the stitches. Flip around to the front again. These are things that I do not care about. For me, the stitching is holding the layers together. And if the stitches hold the layers together and look good and add some texture to it at the same time, I'm happy. The level of perfection that you work toward totally depends on what matters to you. So if it's really important to you to have tiny, tiny, tiny stitches, work your way down to smaller and smaller and smaller needles. That's how you get smaller stitches is by using a smaller needle. Uh, I think it's more important to have them be relatively evenly spaced and even length. I don't want to have one tiny, tiny stitch and then one stitch that's, you know, a quarter of an inch long. So. Work on uniformity of your stitches rather than tiny, tiny pinpricks unless you're planning to enter your quilt in shows. And then you really do need, do need to work on those other things that don't matter at all to the structure and the integrity of your quilt. It's really just a judging thing. One other thing that I wanted to show you is I showed this on a solid fabric with a contrasting thread. Most people use matching thread for their quilting, so it's just giving you a subtle texture, and that will still show up nicely on a solid fabric. One of the very first quilts that I made was this one, which I love. I think it's a beautiful quilt and it makes me happy, but I did all kinds of, hand, this is all hand quilted 
which was really kind of a waste on a design like this where you can't see it because the, the fabrics are so heavily patterned that the, the pattern, that the stitching doesn't really show up. I could have machine quilted this and it would have been just fine. I'm okay with that because I really like to hand quilt. But if you want your stitching to show, make sure that you're using a solid or a nearly solid fabric. You can see that all of a sudden here, the stitching really pops out where here and especially here and here, it completely disappears. You still see the, the little bit of the texture and the bumpiness, but you're not seeing the individual stitches. So keep that in mind when you're deciding whether to hand quilt or machine quilt. Some projects really lend themselves to hand quilting and some could just as easily be quilted by machine. The last thing that you'll need to know, or two things you'll need to know, if you want to do two parallel lines, you want to carry this thread between the layers. So I've gone in here and I'm going between the layers that has not poked through to the back. And I'm going to come out here. So now I'm just going to do a quick couple of stitches here. Oops, that's a little big. You can always back it up. Okay. All right, so now what do you do when you get to the end? You have to tie it off. So this looks a little bit like a French knot. You wrap the thread a couple of times around your needle, and then I just set my finger on it so that it goes close-ish to the end there. And then I'm going to work my way, do the same thing. That needle is sliding between the layers. Come out some distance away. Pull until my knee, the knot rests on the fabric. And then you give it a little tug. And now that needle, that knot is hidden. And you can just snip this thread off. And then only your stitching shows, no needles, or no knots. So that's it. That's the basic hand quilting stitch. It's essentially a running stitch worked pretty small. One thing to keep in mind is that the way you do it is going to evolve as you work on it. It's going to feel very, very unnatural the first few times you do this. It's a really, really weird way to sew. A lot of people come up with a method where I can only quilt towards me if I'm doing hand quilting. Some people can only quilt to the left or to the right, and some people can only quilt away from them. And some people are amazing and they can quilt in any direction. But work at it, try different needle lengths, try different thimbles, and try different positions to hold your hands and to sit while you're doing it, and come up with the way that works best for you. It really is all about what ends up feeling natural to you. Just remember that none of it is going to feel natural when you first start. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next time.